Imagine you create a record inside SharePoint, Dataverse, SQL Server, it doesn't matter, using Power Apps. And you want to get immediate read access to the record that you just created. Let me give you some examples. You create a, for example, request for something. As soon as you save that request, you want to have a quick review on it, and then you submit it for approval. One example. Another example, you want to have, for example, an order to be created inside SharePoint, Dataverse, or any other data source. So you create the order itself, then you need to get the ID of that record so that you can add order items to that order into a different list or table. Again, you need to use that automatically generated ID as the foreign key in the details table. I can give you lots of examples, but the whole idea is that you want to say, okay, I just created this record inside the database, inside SharePoint, inside any data source, just give me that record because there are some fields that I inserted and there are some fields that they are automatically assigned and I don't know what they are. I want to get those values. And this is a topic for our video today. Without wasting time, let's do it. Let's quickly discuss the setup that we have for this video. We have a SharePoint list and the Power Apps. The request is created by the user inside SharePoint list. The user can review and edit the request. And on the review and edit request, user can submit the request for the approval to Power Automate, which of course in this video, I don't want to get into the Power Automate part. So let's quickly visualize it so we are all on the same page. We have SharePoint and we have a Power Apps gallery that shows us the list items. User can push a plus button and it takes the user to the new screen. User can create a new item in this screen. And when the user pushes save, the record goes inside SharePoint. But at the same time, user is redirected to another screen that this screen shows the same values in the view mode that the user can review and submit. Typically, when we click on the item in the gallery, we pick the selected item, we either directly pass it to the other screen or we put it in a variable. Regardless of the approach, that part is easy because the record is right in front of us. This one, we create the record and as soon as we create the record inside SharePoint or any other data source, we want to tell the next window to go there and pick the record that we just created. And this is what we are going to talk about in this video. And finally, after the user reads this value, he or she should be able to push a submit button and send it for processing and the Power Automate or anything else. That's not our scope. Our scope is creating the new item and reading the same item that we just created in a different screen so that we can capture the values that they are automatically assigned by the data provider or data source, in this case, our SharePoint. And I specifically look for the ID of the item that has been created. Now, this is our SharePoint list. I have title, description, and the status of the request. And if I want to create one request here, just I want to draw your attention to the area that the status by default is saved. So if the user doesn't enter anything, SharePoint automatically assigns save to it. So when we create a record, if we don't give the user an option to enter the value, SharePoint assigns it. And when we go to the view screen, it should show the status saved there as well. I also want to show the ID. So here, if I go for edit current view, I can pick the ID and I can bring it to the first column in the view. So it will show me the ID of the item that has been created. Of course, these values are automatically assigned. So I just want to be able to capture it after the item is created. Now, let's create our app. This is just a brand new Power Apps app. I want to rename this screen to SCR underscore list requests. And inside this screen, I want to add a gallery. So let's pick a vertical gallery here, add it quickly here. I need to search for SharePoint. There we go. I pick any account that I want, go back to my SharePoint, get the URL of the site, and just stick it here and click on Connect. 
The list that I have here is called requests demo. I connect to that and we are good to go. The only thing I want to do, I want to set the layout to title and subtitle. And at the moment, there is nothing here. I think it's a good idea if I just want to add one dummy value here. I say dummy request lorem epsom. All right, let's just save it. I go back to my app and let me just refresh this so we can have the values here. Bingo. I don't want to show the ID here. I just want to show the title and request description, description. And I have my lorem ipsum here. We just expand it a little bit and make this one a little bit larger. All right, just save it. And I don't want to share it with anyone. That's great. So far, I created the first element of my form. Now I need to create a new screen. So I add a new screen here. And this new screen, let me go to the tree view. I rename it to scr underscore new request. Right. I also want to add another screen and I want to call it scr view request. Okay, so the view request is easy. I just need to insert a view form here or display form here. Uh, source is going to be the request demo. I always want to show them in one column and the item that we want to pick from here, it can be the gallery one, the gallery that we just added, dot selected item. Let me just save it. Although this is not the best practice, but we will change it later on. So at the moment, if I click on the gallery here, I just need to pick the unselect event. And for this, I just say navigate to scr underscore view request. And we are good with this one. So if I click on this one and I run it, if I click on this item, it takes me to the other screen that shows me the item and we're good. And then this is a screen just to show or pretend that we want to submit this one. Let me just add a dummy button here, which I will not do anything about it. So I just say submit for review or approval, whatever you want to call it. So save. I want to have a new form. So I go to the forms, I add an edit form here. Again, I connect it to the same requests demo. Let me just rename it. I call it edit form underscore new request. Right? I don't want this attachments. I just want one column here. So everything looks good. I also don't want to display status here. So when the user creates a request, the status should be automatically assigned by SharePoint, not inside the app. Also, the default mode for this form is going to be new and the user should be able to come to this screen from the first screen. Let me just add quickly an add icon here that will take us to the other screen. ICO new request. So when the user clicks on this, it should do two things. First of all, this form needs to be reset so every time the user goes to that screen should get a fresh form that doesn't have anything inside it. So I say reset form. It's going to be edit form new request. Then the user can navigate to the other screen, SCR new request. Okay. So let's see if this one works. If I click on this and I click on this plus, it takes me to this screen that has a fresh form. Okay. Now, when the user pushes the save button here, let me add a save button here. Save. And I change the name to 
btn underscore save. That one should submit the form. So the save will say submit form. And that's going to be my edit form new request. Okay. Save. And if the save is successful, user should be navigated to the other screen to view the form. So when this form is successful, I would say navigate to where? To SCR view request. Now, so far that's great, but when the record is created here, if the user goes to the other screen, that screen still shows the value that has been selected before in this gallery. This view does not have a clue about the newly created record. And this is where our video actually starts. First thing that you want to know is the record that this screen, that this view screen should show, let's put it in a variable so that we can play with it. In this case, if the user clicks on an item here and comes to the view, or the user creates a new record here and comes to this view, regardless, we set the record that this guy is going to display in a variable. All right? So if this is the case, when the user clicks on a gallery on select, instead of just navigating there, I go before navigation and I create a global variable and I call it current request. And the value that I want to put inside it is going to be my gallery one dot selected. All right, semicolon. And we are good to go. So in this case, if I run this and I click on the item, it takes me to the other screen. And in this screen, instead of picking the gallery one dot selected, I want to pick current request. And that's going to show me the request that has been selected or basically the record that has been placed in this variable. So all we need to do now when the new request is created, before we actually navigate to that, that screen, we need to locate that recently created record here and put it in that variable, which is the current request. And this is how we do it. Before I navigate, because the submission has been successful, I can say set current request but instead of selected record in the gallery, I go to my edit form and I say last submit, which refers to the record that has been just added after successful submission. I save that. And of course, the semicolon. Now that the newly created record from SharePoint is assigned to this variable, when I go to this screen, that shows me the record. Let me just run it and show you. Oops, not from here. From here. Run, and I click on this plus. It takes me to this screen. Title, I say test, description, test, description, and I click on save. It takes me here, and it shows me these values. The cool part is that it actually captures the status from SharePoint. So you see, these are not the values that is coming from that form to this screen. The form actually sends the data to SharePoint. When the record is actually created, it captures the values and brings them here. Of course, I can come back here and I can also add the ID here. So let's say edit fields, add fields, and I can pick ID, right? And now it shows me the ID too. If I go back to my first screen again and run it, let me create another one title, new request, and another lorem ipsum. And I click on save. This time it shows me the ID three, which is the ID that I have inside SharePoint for this new request. Now the question is that, can we use the same approach for master detailed data entry? So for example, creating an order 
So on the first stage, we create the order, capture the ID of that order, and on the second stage, we pass the same ID to the order item so we can have a complete order in a master detail structure in our data source, regardless if it is SharePoint, if it is Dataverse, or anything else. All right, we created the record and we got the direct reference to that record, but can we use the same approach for order and order details or so something like a master details? The reality is that it's not really practical and I'm telling you why. The reason is that when I create the order, order does not mean anything until I actually create the order items. So if at one stage I create the record for order, and then on the second screen, I want to let the user to add the items one by one to that order details table or list, something doesn't add up. This guy is distracted, this guy walks away, shift this over, computer crashes, laptop runs out of battery, anything can happen that can possibly leave us with an order without items in it. So what is the right way to do that? That's gonna be the topic for my next video. Now, this is your turn. Tell me in the comments that, how do you want it to be done? Do you want it in SharePoint or Dataverse? As soon as I get the comments about it, I will get into it and I will do it for you. And when it is ready, I will put the link right there. Thank you for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.